I've saved my progress as left half complete dot AI found inside the O4 line art folder. Now what we're going to do is take this left half and flip it to create a right half because there's no sense in redoing everything we've done. You could draw three more arcs, of course, and then trouble yourself with having to exactly match the one on the left hand side and then join them all together. That is possible, but that would be a lot more work and you wouldn't get as good a result. So frequently inside of Illustrator, you're looking for the shortcut that produces the best results possible. And in our case, flipping is the solution. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this path outline with the black arrow tool in order to select it. And again, what you want to look for when you're trying to select paths, I'll click off of here again. You're looking for that little black square next to the arrow cursor. That tells you you're hovering over something that you can select. Click on it and now it's selected. Now then, there's a variety of different ways to flip objects inside of Illustrator. For example, I can bring up that transform panel once again and I could click on this itty bitty little flyout menu icon and then I could choose flip horizontal but it'll do this number, which doesn't do me any good whatsoever. Now I have a right half of a heart in the wrong location. So I'll go ahead and press Control-Z, Command-Z on the Mac to undo that modification. Instead, what you want to do is something that doesn't seem like the right approach. You're going to select a tool. There's actually a reflection tool inside of Illustrator, and that's really unusual. There are very few programs out there with reflection tools, and Illustrator has had one since Illustrator 1.0. And you get to it by clicking and holding on the rotate tool and then choosing the reflect tool. And notice it has a keyboard shortcut of O. Now, the letter O doesn't appear anywhere inside reflect. However, you can remember it because it is the ultimate in symmetrical letters. Its right half is just like its left half and its top half is just like its bottom half. So go ahead and select it. And now what you want to do, and this sounds so weird, but this is like the way you use this tool. There's other ways to do it, but this is the way. You Alt or Option click at the location where you want to set the mirror about which you want to reflect the object. So in other words, in our case, we want to go ahead and reflect this left half of a heart over on this side. So the mirror should be right down the middle of the heart. So you can Alt click or Option click at either this top anchor point or the bottom anchor point. Your choice. They're both located at the same guideline. So I'm going to Alt click here or Option click at that location. And notice, in my case, right away, Illustrator goes ahead and throws the reflection on the right hand side of that click point. Now, why did I alter option click? To bring up this dialog box right here. If you just click or click and drag with the tool, you're going to have to apply the reflection manually. And it's kind of bizarre the way this tool works. Whereas if you alter option click to bring up the dialog box, it behaves very, very well. And so I'm here to tell you, as a longtime user of the software, this is what you do with this tool. You get it, you alter option click with it to bring up the reflect dialog box and you get to work. Now you don't say I want to flip something horizontal or I want to flip something vertical. That would be too easy. Instead, you have to select an axis. In other words, are you going to flip across a horizontal axis, which would be a vertical flip, or are you going to flip across a vertical axis, which would be a horizontal flip, or are you going to use an angled axis, which takes some thinking? In order to figure out. So notice that if you choose horizontal, you're going to get this result here, which is pretty obviously wrong, I think. So go with vertical instead. And basically, if you're having problems figuring it out, just try one. If it doesn't work, then try the other. And keep preview on so you can see what you're doing. Now, if you click OK, you're going to flip that half a heart. You don't want to do that. You want to click copy in order to make a duplicate. So click the copy button, and now you have a whole heart. But notice that we're not joined. So what we're not getting is a nice point at the bottom of the heart. So I'm going to switch back to my black arrow tool and I'm going to marquee these two heart shapes like so. And then I will press control J or command J on the Mac. And I want you to watch something. Actually, I'm going to zoom in here to the bottom of the heart so you can see this happen. As soon as you press control J or command J on the Mac, you're going to fuse these two endpoints into one and you're going to complete the miter join. This is known as a miter join. You can just think of it as being the point that was missing at the bottom of the heart. Now, we don't have a miter up here at the top of the heart, and that's because what would happen? If you were able to get a miter joint to draw right here, it would be so deep it would stab all the way through the heart because of the radical incline at which these two curves are meeting. So there's no point in even trying to pull it off. We're going to leave what's known as a bevel join in place there because we're going to cover it up with a different object. But now we have a beautifully rounded classic heart shape.
In the next exercise, we're going to draw a target inside of it.